Is it possible to correctly discern situations, events, people's motive, and the spirit at work in different people? Can a believer figure people out, or should we allow people into lives, with the hopes that somehow down the line, they will reveal their true character? Silently, we seek to know, we seek to discern. The great thing is, as Christians, God has shown us in His Word that we can have revelation and insight into situations and people because of the Holy Spirit. Jesus promised to send Him before He left for heaven, simply because He knows how much we need Him in a topsy-turvy world. John 16, 7, KJV says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. His primary assignment is to teach us all things and guide us into all truth. To teach us also means to reveal things to us. John 16, 13 How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he shall show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I, that he shall take of mine, and shall show it unto you. The Holy Spirit is here to always reveal things to us. Many Christians think that the gift of revelation and the word of knowledge is just for some select few or some special breed. This is far from the truth. All of God's children have access to the mind of God if they truly desire to walk in truth. We have the unlimited capacity to grow in discernment and know the mind of God when we are thirsty for more understanding. In this area of our spiritual journey, the Bible shows us what we need to begin this journey of discernment in Isaiah 55, 1, KJV. Ho, oh, every one that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk, without money and without price. Jesus also said in John 7, 37, In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. With our thirst in place and by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, let's take this journey on how we can make our discernment better. Number 1. You must be born again and remain saved. It's a known fact that important assets of every family are shared amongst family members. The body of Christ is God's family. Therefore, the gift of discernment is a very important asset in this kingdom family and can only be shared amongst God's children. Salvation is the first step. You must accept Jesus as Lord, the new owner of your life, and also accept him as savior to ever experience some kind of gifts. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeneth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whether it goeth so is every one that is born of the Spirit. John 3, 5 Number 2. Be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Acts 2, 38 KJV Receiving the gift of Holy Ghost is very important because that was one of the major missions of Jesus Christ. I indeed have baptized you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Mark 1, 8, KJV. Also for us to understand God's word much more deeply, we need to be baptized by the Holy Spirit, because it is only when he is in us that he can communicate with us effortlessly. 
John 14, 26, KJV says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Number 3. Our relationship with God must be top priority, as God will only show us things to come when we are in a real relationship with Him. Remember God's relationship with Abraham? God referred to Abraham as his friend and later told Abraham about his intentions for Sodom and Gomorrah. Genesis 18:20. And the Lord said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which is come unto me, and if not, I will know. And the men turned their faces from thence, and went toward Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord, and Abraham drew near, and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Peradventure there be fifty righteous within the city. Wilt thou also destroy, and not spare the place for the fifty righteous that are therein? That be far from thee to do, after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked. And that the righteous should be as the wicked, that be far from thee. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? And the Lord said, If I find in Sodom fifty righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sakes. And Abraham answered and said, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which am but dust and ashes. Peradventure, there shall lack five of the fifty righteous. Wilt thou destroy all the city for lack of five? And he said, If I find there forty and five, I will not destroy it. Abraham went further to plead with God on the terms upon which Sodom will be destroyed. We must cultivate our relationship with God by spending time with Him as all good relationships takes time to grow. God hasn't changed. He will keep relating with us today as friends if we stay in relationship with Him. Number 4. The Word of God is the mind of God, and the Bible is the word bank where God's character, purposes, will, and desires are documented for us to learn from. We can't know the mind of God if we don't fellowship with God by studying our Bibles. 2 Timothy 3, 15 And how from childhood you have known the sacred writings, Hebrew scriptures, which are able to give you the wisdom that leads to salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus, surrendering your entire self to Him and having absolute confidence in His wisdom, power, and goodness. All scripture is God-breathed, given by divine inspiration, and is profitable for instruction, for conviction of sin, for correction of error and restoration to obedience, for training in righteousness, learning to live in conformity to God's will, both publicly and privately, behaving honorably with personal integrity and moral courage, so that the man of God may be complete and proficient, outfitted and thoroughly equipped for every good work. So it is wisdom for us to embrace studying the Word of God, to remain in touch with Him, our spirit is fed and kept alive by the Word of God, and when our spirit is filled with the Word, the Spirit of God reveals things to come to our spirit. Rivers of living waters in the form of discernment and words of knowledge will begin to come out of our mouth through our spirit. John 7:38. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. The Holy Spirit knows all things, but we need him to remain with us for us to stand any chance of him revealing anything to us. The Word also keeps us alert and alive to our physical and spiritual environment. It is more or less like a physical and spiritual sensor that beeps when it senses anything strange around. And the way to keep the sensor working is to live right, speak right, and take right actions. Number 5. You can also ask God, Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Matthew 7, 7, 
KJV. There are times we feel something is not right, but we're not able to place our finger on exactly what is wrong. Asking the Holy Spirit is the best option for us. We may also want to know what is to come concerning a decision that needs to be made. Let's see the account of Apostle Paul in Acts 27, 9. Now much time had been lost, and navigation was dangerous, because even the time for the fast day of atonement was already over. So Paul began to strongly warn them, saying, Men, I sense after careful thought and observation that this voyage will certainly be a disaster and with great loss, not only of the cargo and the ship, but also of our lives. However, the centurion, Julius, ranking officer on board, was persuaded by the pilots and the owner of the ship rather than by what Paul said. Because the harbor was not well situated for wintering, the majority of the sailors decided to put to sea from there, hoping somehow to reach Phoenix, a harbor of Crete facing southwest and northwest, and spend the winter there. Note the following. Discernment is for every believer. In Ephesians 1, 3, the Bible makes us see that God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. This means as long as we study the Word of God, we are entitled to the gift and ability to discern things, events, and people. We must constantly exercise ourselves unto godliness by studying the Word and praying the prayer of inquiry to enhance our ability to discern. We should discipline ourselves to grow spiritually. Discipline is a scary word for some, but it is a very important factor if we must grow in discernment. Proper discernment is a facilitator of success in our family, business, spiritual relationship with God, and physical relationship with people around us. Also, proper discernment will equip us to act wisely when we are confronted with situations and circumstances that we didn't plan for. It should actually be our goal to grow in knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the Lord's ways. Remember, there is always room for growth, improvement, and a deeper understanding in truth. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for this light. Thank you for the gift of discernment and the knowledge to enhance it. I give you glory. I ask, Lord, that as I continue to exercise myself in growing my discernment, help me to grow spiritually and make me a better kingdom citizen at the end. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.